This is the Instrument Traverse Nomogram. It's a piece of Soviet military equipment that can do all kinds of stuff. It has this quarter circle chart printed on hard aluminum with grid markings from 0 to 200 and a pivoting arm that's also marked off from 0 to 200. Around the edge of the circle are four colored scales and another one up top with a bunch of 50s on it. You can turn this plate over and you'll see the distance determination nomogram, which is another chart. Over here is the check method plate, where you can write down some intermediate steps while you're computing. And on the back of that is another chart and sort of a quick reference of instructions. You know, just in case you found this weird thing and you have no idea what it is or what it could possibly be useful for. I have the original instructions, which is a nice little hardback book. I expected to be able to read through this and figure it all out, but you'll realize right away this is a bad translation. It's not inaccurate as far as I can tell, but it reads like a computer translation. Instrument Traverse Nomogram is designed for computation in units of artillery topography service with the rapid analytic method of topographic preparation. I guess I know most of those words, but it still doesn't make a lot of sense. And you can see they left the Cyrillic acronym in there. On the last page, you can see the full name in Russian. Nomogramma Instrumentalnovo Choda. That's where those three letters come from. Usually the Soviets like to pronounce their acronym, so they probably called this NICH. I'll call it the NIX. It says Passport BL something something down here. I don't know what that means. Let me know if you know. Leave a comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I don't see anywhere that says exactly where this was made, but it has a handwritten certificate at the end of the book with the date of November 30th, 1987. After some time wrestling with the instructions, I think I mostly figured it out. This thing is meant for doing geometric calculations about distances and angles between points. The instructions suggest this would have been used by artillery units trying to aim their guns. There's lots of geometric information that you might want in that situation. Like, if I know the coordinates of where I am, then find the coordinates of a point 100 meters away with some direction given by some angle here. Or maybe I know the coordinates of that point, and I need to find the distance that it is from me. Now, if I was trying to do this kind of computation myself, I would use some mixture of the Pythagorean theorem and sines and cosines. I would have to use a calculator for the trig functions, and I'd probably need to do square roots, too, for the Pythagorean theorem. But the Nix does it all with this big chart and swiveling arm. It's pretty cool. See, the markings along the arm allow you to measure the hypotenuse lengths without using square roots. And the markings in the horizontal directions are basically telling you the coordinates of points around the unit circle, which is how it can handle the trig functions. But we don't need to get into all that. Let's just try a simple one. Let's say I want to know the coordinates of a point 150 meters away where the angle measured here is, say, 34.3 degrees. It turns out there are a few oddities about Soviet surveying that I need to clear up. First of all, this is not just a Soviet thing, but surveyors measure directions of everything relative to north. So mathematicians usually would draw diagrams in the plane like this. The x-axis is horizontal, the y-axis is vertical, and the angle is measured counterclockwise starting from the x-axis on the right. But in surveying, they do everything in terms of the north, and the north is up. So they would draw it with the x-axis going vertical, and the y-axis horizontal, and the angles measured clockwise starting from the x-axis on top. That's why on the Nix we see the x going vertically and the y horizontally. An angular scale starts at zero at the top, and it goes up as we move clockwise and down. Now the second weird thing, and this is a Soviet thing, is the angular units they use. The usual way is to divide the circle into 360 degrees, but the surveying in the Soviet army used a special unit which divides the circle into 60 parts. Check out this photo of a Soviet artillery compass. You can see it's marked out to 60 around the whole circle. This angular unit was called the Bolshaya Delenia Uglomera which means big division of the protractor. I'll call them BDPs. So all the way around the circle is 60 BDPs. 
That means a 90 degree angle is 15 BDPs. Okay, so what was I saying? I want to know the coordinates of a point 150 meters away when the angle measured here is 34.3 degrees. Well, I guess that's 5.7 BDPs. Anyway, you put the measuring arm so that the top marks 5.7 BDPs. Then you look at 150 on the arm and you mark that spot with a pencil. Now you use the grid to look up the coordinates and that's your answer. X is 125 and Y is 84. And those are the coordinates of that other point. Pretty good, right? The measuring arm has this great little spike and a dot marking on the end so that you can really precisely line up the angle. It's got a really great way of reading angles past 90 too. See the chart only has 90 degrees, I mean 15 BDPs on there, but obviously there are cases when you'd want to do bigger angles than that. But look at this, if you want to read say 27 BDP, you start up here at zero, follow the little arrows in the white all the way down. One, two, three, right? Here's 13, 14, 15. And then you move over to the red level and you follow those arrows back up clockwise. If you snake back and forth like this, you can read anything up to 60 BDPs, which is 360 degrees all the way around. Each time going back and forth in this snaking pattern would correspond to going across one of the quadrants in the XY plane. So there's this little color-coded legend telling you if the answers are positive or negative depending on which quadrant you're in. This is actually the same as those tricks you might have learned for remembering the signs of the trig functions. Overall, this thing seems to do its job really well, and it's a reminder that electronic calculators aren't always the best tool. Of course, if you want a general purpose computer, then electronics is the way to go. But for solving this particular problem, you can probably make the computations with the NIX faster than you could with a calculator. There's no way the NIX is going to malfunction or run out of batteries. It's all physical, so it's pretty bulletproof. Actually, it may be literally bulletproof. And we've all been there, right? You're out and about with your friends, maybe doing some casual surveying, you know what I'm saying? Looking fine with the nicks over your shoulder. Then some guy bumps you and your instrument traverse nomogram spills open and dumps all over the sidewalk. Your friends all stare. Then come the giggles. But you don't need to worry about that with this thing. It's got these cute little metal clasps to hold it close. There's no way that's coming open by accident. I'm pretty sure this is intended for military use, right? So why would the Russians in the 1980s make a piece of military equipment with instructions in English? You know, I was a kid in America in the 80s. Back then the Russians were like our enemies. There was actually a real chance that the Russians and the Americans could have destroyed each other and taken the rest of the world with them. But I bet during all that Cold War hysteria, a lot of the Russians actually wanted to make peace with the U.S. Maybe most of them did. Maybe one young surveyor with kindness in his heart said to his boss, hey, how about we make a version of that Nix in English? And now, 30 years later, as a new conflict between our nations brews, I hold a symbol of common sense kindness, a small offering of peace between two peoples whose governments have become crazy with lust for military power. It doesn't look like much, but maybe, just maybe, this one small... Whoa! Okay. It's alright. It's made of metal.